Welcome back to Women's Strength and Bodybuilding, where we highlight beautiful and talented women who compete. My name is Mark, and let's talk about Corey Everson. Before we jump in, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss a beat. This one's been a long time coming. I know we have quite a few fans of the champ out there, so it's my pleasure to dive a little bit deeper in finding out a little bit more about who Corey is. If you're here, you're probably at least familiar with Corey, and that she had a legacy of dominating the Olympia back in the mid to late 80s. You might not know that if it weren't for getting involved in track and field, gymnastics, and badminton while attending the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Corey might never have went into a weight room in the first place. This is where she met her first husband, Jeff Everson, through her dedication to improving her strength and performance, and even ended up keeping his last name. At this particular time in her life, the track and field competitors like the throwers, jumpers, and the pentathletes like Corey were the only women in the gym, and they trained with the football team and the wrestling team. While training, Corey used to focus on strength and symmetry, focusing on lower weight and higher intensity to increase her muscle density. It's funny to hear Corey talk about her training, because that's what her main strategy focused on. One thing lacking in her regimen was her diet, claiming that she used to bring bagels into the gym. Her philosophy was that whatever she missed in the diet, she'd make up for in the workout. She loved to eat more normally and have pizza, ice cream, and Snickers bars, then just train harder in the gym next time to make up for it. She never used to measure the ingredients in her food or take it so seriously like the competitors do today. When I first started my prep for my two shows, the first thing my trainer had me buy was a food scale, and that concept just wasn't something people did back then. Corey didn't even really track how much protein she was getting, and to put it in her words, the mirror said everything. If you looked good and you looked like you were on track, the mirror would tell you so. It's hard to argue with a strategy that won the Olympia six times. Corey's first contest was in 1980 as an amateur, and she was never planning on being a professional. Her husband Jeff got her into competing, and it was something she was able to do after graduating college. Corey never dreamed of being Miss Olympia, but more enjoyed bodybuilding as something she could do together with Jeff. In her words, the sport was so new back when she first got started, and there wasn't nearly the volume of people who are competing like there is today. In about 1981, Corey had a blood clot in her leg, and they almost had to amputate. She described it as the equivalent of having a dull, throbbing headache in her leg, and that it was one of the worst pains she's ever felt. One day her leg was throbbing and it doubled in size, so her mom rushed her to the emergency room, where she stayed in intensive care for 10 weeks and critical care for four weeks. She lost all her gains and had to relearn to walk again after this. She was so grateful to ride a bike again when she got better. And through this experience, she learned that whatever comes your way in life, you can overcome it. Turns out she inherited a clotting condition, which she attributes to being of German heritage. This wasn't the only tragedy Corey had to deal with either. In 1996, she ended up splitting up with her first husband, Jeff Everson who passed in 2019 at the young age of 68. She still wears her wedding ring from her marriage to Jeff and was able to go on and remarry her current husband, Steve Donya. Back to competing, Corey won every Olympia she entered. The first one she did was in 1984 and she wasn't even expecting to be in the top 10. She was just coming off a win at the Miss America and she'd figure she'd compete in the show because she was still in shape and wanted to gain the experience. Get this, Corey attests that during the show, the other competitors from Germany and Holland were smoking, which doesn't make any sense. After winning a pro show like the Olympia, you can't step back down to the amateur stage. So Corey focused on the Olympia and thus only competed in six professional level shows. She filled her off time with guest posings, magazine covers, seminars, and did a bunch of traveling with other bodybuilders like Bev Francis and Bob Paris. Fun fact, she's still great friends with Bev to this day and is still really well connected in the bodybuilding and fitness communities. Corey also had a few roles in a couple movies and on TV as well. I remember seeing her on a rerun of Home Improvement where she tried to outlift Tim Allen and also on the Hercules TV show where she played Atalanta. She's probably best known for her appearance in Double Impact, the John claude Van Damme flick. Along with Rachel McLeish doing films like Iron Eagle 3, I think Hollywood was trying out muscular women to see if it'd take off the same way Arnold did. Corey had a variety of small roles, but nothing really that substantial. I think the public generally thought she was still too muscular, which is a bummer. Her physique was just before her time. 
Corey got out of bodybuilding in 1989 because it was getting harder for her to win against the women that were coming in much bigger. Well, she largely stayed the same. Through all six of her Olympias, she hovered around 145 pounds on her 5'9 frame. Like I said before, bodybuilding is an illusion and she was able to trick people into thinking that she made some massive strides in her conditioning. But in reality, it was just different branding and presentation. She found herself training much harder, but was finding it increasingly difficult to put on more size. So that was essentially her cue to exit. So that's a little bit more about Corey. And one thing I think Corey deserves more recognition for is her old school workout videos. They're pretty awesome. She was like a muscular Jane Fonda, complete with the leg warmers. Some of these videos are still up on YouTube, so be sure to check them out. She looks really pretty, and though she doesn't have enough size to make it into my personal top three, it really shows you what things were like back then, and how things have evolved into what it is today. Keep in mind that back in these times, this was considered super extreme. Now you have girls in the wellness division, having at least as much size in the upper body, and seemingly even more in the lower body. So Corey always had a knack for bodybuilding, and it shows in her contest history. She had a lot of first place finishes in her solo career, as well as in couples championships. Get this, her amateur career went from 1980 to partway through 1984, and during that time she won first place 12 times. Her worst placing was 11th at the American Championships, and her bodybuilding career really skyrocketed after winning the Olympia in 1984. She went on to win the Olympia again in 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988, and 1989, which was her last show. I commend Corey for going out while she was on top and knowing when it's time to hang it up. She was a pivotal figurehead for women's bodybuilding back when essentially nobody knew what it was supposed to be. She had and still has an award-winning smile and a really bubbly personality. She looked genuinely fun to be around and would often bake chocolate chip cookies for everyone at the gym. Her structure and genetics really popped during this time and it defined an entire era of women's bodybuilding. There are still several photos of her floating around the internet that showcase some of the most beautiful striations she was able to achieve in her muscles. Corey had a resurgence of popularity over a decade ago when she posed for Iron Man magazine at age 50 and still looked incredible. Nowadays, Corey has moved on to a different phase in life and she's really focused a lot on raising her kids that she adopted from an orphanage in Russia. She describes them as spiritual and used to take them to feed the homeless. She likes doing good and putting smiles on other people's faces because it makes her feel good in turn. Corey still stays really active and her diet has improved a lot since her competing days. She's been investing in real estate and as a former art student, is looking to get back into creating works of art. You can find her on Insta, posting the occasional throwback photo or new ones with her family. We all know that bodybuilding can't last forever. And it's been really interesting seeing how this it girl from the 80s has transformed and transitioned into another phase of life with such beauty and grace. And that wraps it up. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you know something about Corey that I missed. And be sure to subscribe for more great women's strength and bodybuilding content.